This is Unit 4, Similarity, Lesson 4.4, Similarity Applications. You should be watching this on Friday, November the 30th, or Monday, December the 3rd, if you're a B-Day, prior to class on 12-4 or 12-5. Don't forget to uh, note the location and the date and time that you're watching this video, and make sure you get a parent, guardian, or librarian, or teacher sign-off. Let's do a quick recap problem. You've seen this before. It says, we want to write an equation of a line in slope-intercept form, which is perpendicular to the given line and goes through the given point. Slope-intercept, of course, is y equals mx plus b. And slope and perpendicular, let's write this in the margin. We know for parallel lines, slope equals slope. And for perpendicular lines, slope times slope must equal negative 1. So we're going to start by graphing this given point. So that's y equals mx plus b. And our y-intercept is negative 3. And our given slope is negative 2 over 1. It's negative, so we know it goes down from left to right. So negative 2, we drop 2 and go over 1, or we go up 2 and over 1. Let's graph our given line. Okay, so this line is y equals negative 2x minus 3. Now we want to write an equation of a line that has two qualities. It goes through this point and has a perpendicular slope. Now our perpendicular slope, if our given slope is negative 2, our perpendicular slope is both the opposite reciprocal, so it's going to be positive 1 over 2. Because negative 2 times positive 1 over 2 equals negative 1. So for our desired line, we write y equals mx plus b. And let's plug in what we have. Our desired slope is 1 half. Our x is going to be negative 4. Our y is positive 1. And now we solve. 1 half of negative 4 is negative 2. So 1 equals negative 2 plus b. And of course we solve for x by, or solve for b by adding 2. So b equals positive 3. So our desired line is going to be y equals positive one-half x plus three. Let's graph this line. So positive three, and it's a positive line, so it goes up from left to right. So we go up one and over two, or we can go down one and over two this way. Down one, over two. So let's graph this line. Let's see if it meets our two qualities. Quality number one, it's perpendicular to our given line, yes. And does it go through our given point, negative 4, positive 1, which is right there? And the answer is yes. Now we're going to take the concept of similarity one step further into two applications. Into applications. In the past, we learned that there's three shortcuts to similarity, three of them. Shortcut number one, angle-angle similarity. This happens when we have two sets of congruent angles. That is called angle-angle similarity. Same shape, different size. Next one is side-side-side similarity. This happens when all three side ratios 
match, we can do 3 to 6 is 1 to 2 ratio, 4 to 8, 1 to 2 ratio, 5 to 10, 1 to 2 ratio. Ratios all match, so that's going to be side, side, side similarity. Third shortcut is side angle side. So here we just first check our ratios, 3 to 6. Again, that's a 2 to 1 ratio from left to right. 8 to 4, left to right is a 2 to 1 ratio. And then we have a squeeze angle in between, which is congruent. And so this is called side angle side similarity. Side ratio is equal with the squeeze angle in between. Using these, we can show practical applications to the concept of similarity. Let's do one problem together. I'm going to start by finger track and reading. So it says, Sean wants to measure the height of a large sequoia tree at Big Sur National Park with only a tape measure. On a sunny day at 3 p.m., a friend measures Sean's shadow and found it was 13 feet 9 inches in length. Sean's height is 6 feet exactly. The tree's shadow was 84 feet in length. Find the height of the tree. Okay, now we're going to filter. Sean wants to measure the height of the tree. That's our unknown. On a sunny day at 3 p.m., Sean's shadow is 13 feet 9 inches. Sean's height is 6 feet and the tree shadow is 84 feet. Find the length of the tree. That, find the height of the tree. That's our question mark. Now, we're going to work on draw, label, list, cross out. So, we have a tree here. So we're going to draw a tree. And then we have Sean. There's Sean. And here, what kind of information we have here? The height of the tree is our unknown. So we're going to do this bracket here and call this X. And it says here, on a sunny day, measure Sean's shadow. So Sean's shadow, we go like this, is 13. Move Sean a little bit away from our proportion here. Here's Sean. Sean's shadow is 13 feet 9 inches. And I cross this out as I account for it. And Sean's height is 6 feet. Notice we're crossing out as we label and the tree shadow is 84 feet. We want to find the height of the tree. Well, look very carefully and we can actually close this up into two right triangles. Let me close this up so you can see them two right triangles. So in this right triangle, anything against the ground automatically has a right angle, so we at least have a pair of congruent angles. Also, because we're dealing with shadows, the angle up towards the sun, which is called the angle of elevation, has to be the same for both images, because the sun is in the same position for everything. So this angle right here is also congruent because that's called the angle of elevation up towards the sun. I'm going to call it the sun angle. And so that's also congruent. So the first thing we have to figure out is that the triangles are similar. We have a pair of angles and another pair of angles. So the triangles are similar by the angle angle shortcut here. And if they're similar, we can use proportion. Now, there's several proportions we could do. We could go like this. We can go height over height, x over 6, 
equals shadow over shadow, 84 over 13 feet 9 inches. We could go this way, height over shadow, x over 84 equals 6 over height over shadow again. Notice I'm drawing arrows for my proportions. The trick to this is whatever proportion you start with, you have to mirror. So I like to draw arrows to keep track of which direction I'm going. I'm going to use this second one, so I'm going to write out my proportion. So I'm going to go x over 84 feet. That's x over 84 feet equals 6 over 13 feet 9 inches. Now be very careful here. There's a little bit of a trap. We have a discrepancy of units here. We have feet and then we have inches. We need to get everything into feet. But let me just put this right out right now. 13 feet 9 inches is not equal to 13.9. Be very careful with that. Why is it not? Because 9 inches is not a base 10 system. Nine, this is not a decimal system. It's a 9 over 12. So I need to change that 13 feet 9 inches into a decimal. The way I'm going to do that, I'm going to take 9 over 12 First, I'm going to reduce that. 3 goes in here 3 times, and 3 goes in here 4 times. The simplest way to translate it to a decimal is to ask myself, what is 3 fourths of a dollar? 3 fourths of a dollar. You're used to thinking in terms of money. And if you do 3 fourths of a dollar, that's like 3 quarters. And 3 quarters is 0.75. So our proportion should actually look like this, x over 84 feet, x feet over 84 feet equals 6 feet over 13.75 feet. Now our units don't have a discrepancy. We're all in the same units. So we cross multiply. And I have x times 13.75 equals 6 times 84. And divide by 13.75. So x is going to equal 6 times 84 divided by 13.75. So at this point, you can get out your calculator. I'm going to go 6 times 84 equals... I'm going to divide by 13.75 equals, and I get 36.65 feet. So our x equals 36.65 feet. That is the actual height of our tree, 36.65 feet. What I'd like you to do is try this one on your own should take you about five minutes. I'm going to set the clock. After you're finished, I'd like you to check your answer with the video. You have five minutes. Get started on this page. Finger track, read, filter, draw label list, cross out, set up your proportion, and solve.
All right, let's take a look and see how you did. It says a cell phone tower is cell phone tower is 300 feet tall and casts 152 and three fourths feet shadow. Building next to it casts a shadow of 78 and a half feet at the same time. How tall is the building? Is our unknown. So here we have a cell phone tower. Call that our cell phone tower and next to it is a building. Of some sort. And our cell phone tower is 300 feet tall and casts a shadow of 152 and 3 fourths feet. So our shadow here, the whole thing, is 152 and 3 fourths feet. And then our building height, we don't know, so we're going to call that X. And then our building's shadow we do know is going to be 78 and one half feet. Again, this closes up into two separate triangles. Because they're built against the ground, you have right angles for both. And because we're dealing with the sun again, 
the angle up towards the sun for both of them is going to be the same. So they are again similar by angle, angle. You better be prepared to explain that whenever you do these style of problems. Is why are these triangles similar to begin with? So let's pull them apart here. And we have one triangle and then a smaller triangle. And this was 300 feet and 152 and 3 fourths feet. How do you translate that to a decimal? Think 3 fourths of a dollar. 3 fourths of a dollar. And that's 3 quarters. So this is going to be 152.75. And then our high tier is what we don't know. And then we have 78 and a half feet and half of a dollar is 78.5, of course. And then you make your proportion. Your proportion can go several ways. Let me just give you some idea. You could go 300 over x equals 152.75 over 78.5. That would be one direction. Or you could go over this way. 300 over 152.75 equals x over that. So again, which proportion you start with doesn't matter. What does matter is how you mirror it. So I'm going to use that second one. So I'm going to go 300 over 152.75 equals x over 78.5. Cross multiply. And I get 300 times 78.5 equals 152.75 times x. I'm going to divide by 152.75. So I see x is going to equal this right here, 300 times 78.5 divided by 152.75. So we're going to go 300 times 78.5 and then divide by 152.75. And I get the height of my building, which is 154.2 feet. X is 154.2 feet. Check your answer. Check my answer. See if you were accurate.